CDC. And no, I don't mean a center for disease control. I mean, change data capture. Perhaps you've heard of this term or perhaps you haven't. If you have or haven't, I'm going to help simplify this term today so that you can understand when people say CDC or we've got some sort of CDC like pipeline, you know what they're talking about. And if you're a data engineer, I think this is very important to understand because it one teaches you a lot about how databases work because a lot of CDC uh, operates around some components that are specifically tuned towards databases. And it's just one way you can develop near real time uh, pipelines. I always say near real time because it's so hard to release. Like a lot of people like to argue is like, is it real time? Is it not? Uh, especially when it comes down to latency. So we're going to focus on what is CDC, help you understand it and give you a few examples of why companies are using it as well as cover a few examples where I've used it to help uh, improve my whole process and workflow for certain companies. So what is CDC? As the name sort of suggests, it captures the changes that occur in data, specifically in your database. This generally reflects the inserts, updates, and deletes of data on certain rows, and this is often stored in some sort of log. Again, there's multiple ways you can actually implement CDC, but a very common approach is to use what is known as the write ahead log and to read from that. The write ahead log is essentially a key component in a database where, as I kind of referenced earlier, this is where generally the changes that are about to occur in your database are first written. Because when you have to write to a database, if you have things like indexes and if you have to go into, you know, the literal bits and bytes of where things are changing on disk, there is this high risk that if some change is midway or mid, you know, happening and something happens to that database, it might fail and you might lose it, or you might only do half of it and you again, lose this integrity of your data. So a write ahead log is kind of a simple place to first operate. The primary purpose of this write ahead log is essentially to provide a consistent and recoverable state of a system failure. Whatever this might be, power outages, et cetera, when a transaction modifies data in the database, instead of like immediately writing those changes to that database, it writes it to this log. That's really the baseline way of understanding it. If you wanna learn more, uh, they have a small section about this um, in designing data intensive applications where they kind of cover some of this. Well, with that, guess what? You can actually read that information and get a live stream of what is occurring in the database. Of course, that's not the only way you can run CDC. Some people use triggers, which if you've never used a trigger, it's essentially like a stored procedure that when something occurs in the database, again, some sort of modification and insert, update, delete, uh, you can actually code it to like push information elsewhere. Uh, with Postgres, you can almost borderline have a uh, consumer producer kind of relationship where it actually pushes out information that can then be uh, read by some code that can be essentially listened to uh, by some other server. Okay, so why do companies use CDC? And there's tons of benefits again. The first is you get near real-time data. So if you're trying to do real-time analytics or have some sort of real-time operations that you're trying to combine with your analytics, you have a system that manages that. Another benefit is historical data preservation. Often many batch data processing systems only pull data once a day. Meaning that if that data changes throughout the day, you lose the fact that it changed. You don't actually capture it. Um, this often is fine because most data doesn't necessarily always change uh, that quickly. But if you've got especially dimensional data changing at a very fast rate, or maybe just for that day it changed very quickly, you'll lose it. You don't actually keep those changes, but with change data capture, you do. You are very aware of what's changed. So that's another benefit. Change data capture can also help supplement some of your current data pipelines and batch systems that you are already using. But again, what I've already talked about with historical preservation, but also just because you can add uh, new data sources that maybe you were limited to because maybe of size of data or just maybe because at the moment your data engineers don't have time to build a traditional batch pipeline. So they're just going to use some sort of solution that does CDC very simply um, through a point and click approach. Um, so it's just dumped into a data lake and can be dealt with later. That way you don't lose that information. Again, you can set up your own version of this, but if you don't have a team that can actually uh, manage all the components, um, it can get a little bit chaotic. So that's one of the reasons that change data capture is great, but there's a lot of solutions these days that do it. So it's kind of this trade off between picking one or finding a solution. So diving into a few examples, I've both had to do things custom uh, where I've put together things like Kafka to build some sort of change data capture pipeline using Debezium as well, just to capture all those changes. When I was working with a CICD client, they were building essentially a CI CD pipeline uh, platform to help manage all those processes. And as you can imagine, all that stuff happens live and they want to give people information um, in terms of what's happening underneath the hood live, um, as well as gathering metadata. And it was, you know, kind of this 
wild process and they were very into open source so we did everything custom. That was one approach, but since then I've definitely kind of strayed away from that. And I've used a few solutions to try to help reduce the overhead because often sometimes the clients I'm working with, one of the reasons they're calling me is because they might not have a team to manage all these tools. Um, so I've used, for example, one uh, example of tools is stream sets. Uh, in this case, it was mostly around a manufacturing client where they needed to have uh, information about their operations at multiple factories live, right? Like you need to, you need to know that information live for analytical purposes to figure out their problems occurring. And so they didn't want to just have that data the next day. They were like, we need to make decisions live. And so we used stream sets. Eventually that actually get, got a little expensive in terms of the size and, and capacity that they wanted to do. Um, so that was one reason that I started poking around for other solutions. So at the next company, I went with a solution called Estuary. This client was a telecom client. And as you can imagine, telecom has massive data sets because they've got all these phone calls and data being processed. And so they want to analyze all of those ins and outs and when calls end, when calls start, how long they last, etc. And so these data sets are massive, you know, in the terabyte size, and they're not a massive company though, but they still have massive data. And so we were looking for a solution that was a little more affordable and very easy to use, which actually when I originally found it, they hadn't had the UI that I liked, but uh, in the last year they've upgraded it. So it's now really simple to use, a really simple point and click solution where you can just point uh, your pipelines and often use CDC to kind of pull data from some th systems like Postgres or um, MySQL. Um, in our case, we were actually pulling it from um, S3 and SFTP sites, but you can definitely use several different source systems. So it's it was definitely a very helpful solution for me. And I'll link um, all of these tools below so you can look at them yourself, um, as well as a few articles that you can dig into them more. But that's really what change data capture is. It sounds fancy, it really isn't. It's about getting data as soon as it's changed. That's it. There's nothing too crazy about it. Don't let anyone feel or make you feel less for not knowing it. Now you know it, now you know how to explain it. Now you know it has a little bit to do with near real-time data. And I hope if you build your next pipeline and you need to look uh, for the right solution, you have a few avenues to go uh, down below because there's a few options there. And with that, I just wanna say thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. See you and goodbye.